Welcome everyone to the fourth session of Fertility Network UK's 2023 LGBTQ plus Pathway to Parenthood six week course. My name is Bethan and my pronouns are she, her, and I work for Fertility Network UK, providing support to people and leading on our LGBTQ plus specific support. So tonight is the fourth session in the six week course that will cover various options that we as LGBTQ plus people have in creating a family. And each week we'll be joined by experts in the field to focus on one topic. As a reminder, these sessions are being recorded. You'll be able to watch them back as we'll share them on our YouTube channel. And for reassurance, we're only recording the speakers. Please do ask any questions you want on the topic by submitting them in the Q&A channel and we'll get through as many as we can. So without further ado, let's begin tonight's session on funding options. And I'm delighted to be joined by Lucy from Gaia and my colleague Claire from Fertility Network UK. Welcome both. Thank you. Thank you so Hi. much. So um, I believe I'm going to start off this evening. I'll introduce myself. My name is Claire. As Beth says, I work for Fertility Network UK. I have up until recently been part of the England team. So um, I'm a little anxious about being referred to as an expert in my field, but I have done as much investigating as I could in terms of um, NHS funding. Um, and I really hope that I can share some information that will be of value to you guys today. My pronoun is, pronouns are she, her. Um, I don't know if Lucy, you want to do an introduction before I start my presentation or? Definitely. I'm uh, Lucy. I work at Gaia Family, an IVF insurance and financing company. And I've been there for the last three years. And I'm happy to introduce a little bit or tell you a little bit more about what we do at Gaia after Claire presents. And my pronouns are also she and hers. Okay, thank you. So I will share my screen now and start the presentation. Okay, so um, Facility Network UK, um, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about um, NHS funding um, and what is available across the UK. Um, however, I'm sure a lot of you are aware this is a minefield of information, so I will do my very best to cover what I can, and I will share the presentation with you all via email afterwards as well, because there's a lot of links in there that may be of use to you. So I'll, I'll ask Bethan to share that around with everybody at the end of the presentation. And if anybody is watching this um, recorded, please feel free to email us, um, which you will also see at the end of the presentation, if you would like to receive this as well. So as I just said, it's a minefield. So particularly in England, um, we face a postcode lottery, as I'm sure many of you are aware. Sadly, what you're entitled to varies depending on where you live in the UK. So Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales have blanket policies which cover their individual regions. However, England is dependent entirely upon what NHS trust you fall under. And in fact, what NHS trust your GP surgery falls under. And your entitlement can be different in your town and a town that's even just 20 miles away or even just down the road, depending if there is a, a change in trust. So there's a lot of work to be done. And as the, the patient voice in the Fertility Network UK, we are lobbying constantly to, to change this and to make this a fairer fertility funding across England. So NHS funded fertility treatment varies greatly, but in general, the following criteria are taken into consideration. And nice guidelines are what are used in theory to inform um, NHS trust decisions on what they're gonna fund. So NICE guidelines make recommendations for the referral of same-sex couples, which predominantly refers to women who've had 12 cycles of artificial insemination, or also known as IUI, where six or more are IUI and have been unsuccessful. A lot of them are starting to say six rather than 12, but predominantly it's 12 artificial insemination where six have been IUI. Um, couples must have been cohabiting or in a stable relationship for a minimum of two years. Female age recommendation for uh, NHS funded treatment is generally under 40. Some go to 42 and some have policies for people that are different between the ages of 40 and 42. Um, and for male predominantly it's under the age of 55. The person who will carry the child is expected to have a BMI of between 19 and 30 for funding on the NHS. It's different in private clinics. Most private clinics are looking for a BMI of about 35. Um, your general lifestyle will be taken into consideration in terms of whether you smoke, whether you take drugs, whether you take alcohol. Um, whether you have existing children is often taken into consideration and whether you have had previous IVF cycles. 
so in Wales, funding for IUI is provided for those six cycles. Um, and I understand from speaking to Bethan that actually in Wales, they don't really check whether they, that has, whether you've had any um, artificial insemination before. And am I right with that, Bethan? Yeah, so in Wales, um, before you're entitled to the six rounds of IUI, which is fully funded by the NHS, they do ask that you do some rounds of home insemination. Um, but as Claire said, obviously, there's no way um, you, you don't need to give them any proof of that because you can't. So that's always good to know. Um, I don't know where people stand anywhere else in the country in terms of having to prove things, but it's useful to know. And um I, I will recommend on all of these that you contact our uh, our regional branch coordinator for information pertaining to those particular areas. So in Wales, you can access two full cycles of IVF or ICSI on the NHS and storage is offered for up to one year from collection as part of this. Fertility preservation is offered for trans people via the NHS. Surrogacy is funded under the following conditions. The patients will need to identify their own surrogate and make all the legal arrangements. Patients will need to identify and provide their own egg donor where this is needed, either through altruistic egg donation or through an individual agreement. Surrogacy IVF will only be provided when no other fertility treatment options are available to patients. And patients have been referred by a, clin a clinician as needing an IVF surrogacy cycle for medical reasons. And this includes being in a male same-sex relationship or a single gay man. And in Wales, reciprocal IVF is currently not offered. Although we were having a discussion earlier about the fact that donor IVF is often considered to be the same thing although we are fully aware that that is not the same thing in any way shape or form but a lot of policies will consider that to be covering it um, so I've put at the bottom the contact details for the Welsh team so if you want any really specific information on the policies in Wales um, contact the Welsh team and they can talk you through everything that they know and they are definitely the experts in the field far more than I am in terms of the Welsh policy um, as I say the policy I have got a link for the policy up here as well I will send this um, presentation around so you will be able to access all that information as well so in Scotland eligible patients in Scotland may be offered up to three full cycles of IVF or ICSI each individual treatment cycle including all frozen transfers must be completed within 12 months of starting treatment same-sex couples must be able to evidence unexplained subfertility following six cycles of IUI, which may be funded on the NHS. Surrogacy is funded in Scotland, but patients must find their own surrogate and make any legal arrangements. I would imagine that their policy is very much the same as Wales in terms of surrogacy funding. Um, but again, if you want extra details and information on that, contact our, our Scotland coordinator, Sarah, and she'd be happy to run through that on a more personal level with you. In Northern Ireland, they currently fund one partial cycle of one fresh and one frozen embryo transfer. So the other areas that I've covered so far, they talk about a full cycle, which would be the fresh collection um, and transfer, and then subsequent all subsequent frozen uh, embryos to be transferred as well, but within a year, both of the Scotland and Wales. Um, they offer funding for up to four cycles of IUI for same-sex couples, and each female partner from a couple can be treated so effectively doubling chances of success if you're successful you can still have up to their four rounds of um, donor IUI as well so you can go back again surrogacy is not currently funded in Northern Ireland and again for more information details are there to contact the Northern Ireland team England here we go this is the minefield so access to NHS funding in England varies according to your postcode with the number of cycles and access criteria being determined locally. What I haven't been able to do for tonight is to pull out all the information on all the different ICBs across the whole country to tell you what is available for your local area. So what I would recommend is if you want to know what specifically pertains to your area, contact the England team. They now are compiling all of the policies from across the whole country so they should be able to share with you your your individual policy they've also been working really hard to pull together um basically a, a data sheet of everything so they should be able to tell you what you are covered for in your area if they can't yet they will be able to soon and we are hoping to launch a new spreadsheet with all that information on our website in conjunction with the National Fertility Awareness Week in October. So do keep an eye out for that as well, but do contact them if you want to know what's specific to your area. Um, some areas now have fertility policies which 
cover all of the CCGs, what were CCGs, um, but others still, so where you have an NHS trust, they, some of them are still segregated out into much, much smaller areas and they're still harmonizing that. It's still a work in process. It's quite a new, a new thing, these new ICBs. So it is a work in progress that a lot of policies are still under review. Um, and I would absolutely encourage you if you see us promoting anything about policies being under review, have your say if you can. We would really appreciate everybody saying what they want to say about their local policies. Um, as I said earlier, your local area is determined by your GP practice address rather than your own home address. So that's really important that you know that if they're in a different ICB area. And once you identify your local ICB, you can call them directly with queries or you re can request a copy of their current assisted conception or fertility policy by email. But as I say, we do have most of those now. So if you want to get them or you're having any problems getting hold of them, just give us a shout. and We'd be happy to try and provide that for you. I've put a link up there as well to find your ICB so you can also go on the joyous website that will help you to try and locate which ICB you fall under. I refer to them as ICBs and ICS. They're, they are the same thing. So ICS is Integrated Care Service and ICB is Integrated Care Boards, but they are the same thing. So you will see the two different terms coming up. The Women's Health Strategy was a really exciting uh, piece of work that came out last year, towards the end of last year. It, it looks at addressing the current geographical variation in, in access to NHS funding fertility services across England, which is really exciting and hopefully it will help us to put an end to the postcode lottery. It really looked at addressing female same-sex couples and making sure that eligibility is much more fairly treated. It's looking to end all non-clinical eligibility criteria. So what all those things I said earlier about, have you got children from an existing relationship? Um, those sorts of things they want to remove because they don't feel that should be relevant. And they want to improve evidence-based information about privately funded fertility treatments and add-ons, which is something um, that I will come to a little bit later. So patients are able to make better informed choices. Um, I really need to make it clear, this women's health strategy is a 10 year strategy. So while it was launched last year, they've got 10 years to put this in place. So it doesn't mean that changes are gonna happen overnight and it may not have any impact on where you are at this stage of your journey, but it will be changing and it is a positive thing. It's just not changing as quickly as we would all like it to do, but it is in the, in the offing and it will uh, be helpful to you guys. So. What I always say to people, if your ICS, ICB doesn't fund treatment for you and you feel that you should be eligible, we would absolutely encourage you to write to your local NHS trust and to give your reasons why you feel you should be eligible. Um, it's called an individual funding request. And I would absolutely encourage you to quote the Women's Health Strategy when doing that moving forward. Um, it, the Women's Health Strategy is what people are aiming towards. So if you approach your ICS or ICB and say, I would like to be funded, it's not currently funded under my ICB and say, moving forward, this is where we are all going to be. That gives you quite a big bit of leverage in, in trying to get individual funding. Um, can't guarantee that it will work, but it does in a lot of cases. So it's always worth trying. You've got nothing to lose by trying to get that, that funded. Um, and actually copy that letter into your MP as well. Um, just raise awareness and help us as well moving forward to raise awareness and, and let us know too, because we will always support you if you're trying to, to move forward in getting things changed or, or getting that extra support. Um, so in terms of other funding options, eligible people should be able to access funding on the NHS, but we know that approximately 60% are currently funding themselves, which is um unbelievably unfair shouldn't be happening we are unable to recommend any single one approach to managing funding for your own treatment but there are options out there so there are insurance policies which lucy will tell you all about and they i have to be honest when i saw a presentation from guy it blew my mind what is now available to people so it is really exciting that those packet policies are now out there private clinics do have packages available for you so it's always worth speaking to your clinic about what packages might be available there are grants out there, but I would really encourage you to to make sure you're looking at what they're offering, what their criteria is, what those grants actually look like. Um, and crowdfunding. I have heard of people, if you're not afraid to shout about your journey and you think that 
people would help you then absolutely go for crowdfunding and again all that's doing is raising awareness of um of the issues that are out there so i would absolutely encourage that i would say in terms of trying to to manage funding do your research um Lucy will probably talk to you a little bit more about this as well in terms of upfront costs and things, but just make sure that when you have um, your consultations, you really do make sure that they are very upfront about the cost, that there's no hidden extras, you know about all the add-ons that they might be suggesting, that you've done your research on what add-ons are. The HFEA is a brilliant site for looking at what add-ons are, what they mean. They've done a traffic light system of what they consider to be okay to use not enough research done and absolutely no medical um, evidence that they're of any use. And I would absolutely encourage you to, to make sure you are you have as much knowledge as possible when you first go to that appointment. Um, and medications, don't let, don't let the clinics fool you that you can't get your medication elsewhere. ASDA do great, great choices for, <laughs> for, for prescriptions. So don't just think that you have to pay the prices that the, the clinics are quoting you. There are other options out there and just make sure that you really do do your research. You've got a load of questions. You're armed with everything you need to know when you go to that clinic. So when you walk out of there, you have a very clear pricing structure and you know what your options are if you wanted to get your medication elsewhere. Um, in terms of gaining extra information and extra support, I would absolutely encourage you to join local fertility groups. Um, our LGBTQ plus groups are brilliant. We've got one for people who are just starting out, which would probably be most relevant to you guys, just starting on your journey. Um, and our local groups are probably really helpful. So I've just done a map of England here, but we have regional groups across the whole country. But in England, obviously, with the different NHS trusts across the country, it would be really helpful, I think, for some of you to join a group that's local to you. And then you can find out from other people what the funding looks like, what people have been able to achieve in their local area, get a bit more information on a, on a more sort of local, personal level. Um, and there are online Zoom meetings for all of those groups as well, um, either combined ones, which aren't often as specific to ICB areas, but you will have other people that are in the same area that you can chat to directly. So that would be a really helpful way for you to find out a bit more information from other people that have been through it. We have an information line as well, which is available. It's open every weekday from 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. and it's manned by Fertility Network staff. You can find out through them a bit more information about accessing, um, finding your local ICB and finding the information that you need from them. Um, the phone, I haven't put the phone number on there. That was really silly of me, wasn't it? The phone number is on our website, but I will actually include that in the email when I send it around to you guys as well. Um, and also YouTube, we've got loads and loads of webinars. We've already done loads of loads of stuff about um, some of the elements that might be relevant to you. So we did a, an England group meeting on NHS funding for fertility treatment last year, which might be helpful to some of you. We did a, a piece on fertility fairness about NHS and unfair treatment. We did a piece about how to select a donor, what changes to fertility laws matter to you. We did a webinar for Pride Month about uh, LGBTQ plus fertility preservation for trans people and those who are on the journey with them. There is so much on our YouTube channel. So I would recommend you subscribe to that because then you'll also get updates when there's anything new that comes up that might be beneficial to you. And when we post up all our new lovely Pathway to Parenthood course webinars, they'll all be on there as well. So I think there is a lot of information already out there. Um, but if there is anything that you particularly want to know about, I would absolutely encourage you to contact us directly to just find out what, what's relevant to your specific area. And that is that from me. I've tried to keep it as short as I can. <laughs> um, thank you very much for listening. I hope it's been helpful. Sorry, so thank you so much, Claire. Um, Lucy, if it's all right, we'll come to you to talk about um, what your organisation can offer us. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. I work at a company called Gaia, which makes IVF insurance and financing plans for those who need to go through IVF privately or seek private treatment. Um, of course, NHS should be offered to everyone and all all IVF treatment should be covered, but we know firsthand that that's not always the case. Um, so really, as, as we all know, a family unit has no fixed form or, in, or a fixed way to be formed. And in fact, IVF is the natural choice for many. And it was the case for our founder. Our founder um, 
Nada went through five rounds of IVF treatment with his wife because he didn't qualify for NHS funding. And um, fortunately, on his fifth round, after going to three different fertility clinics, um, actually, sorry, four different fertility clinics, two different countries, he was fortunate enough to have his son. But the biggest pain points that he found from his own experience going through private uh, IVF treatment and just IVF treatment generally was the fact that he did not know how many rounds of IVF he was going to have to go through and he didn't know how much it was going to cost him in total. And I can talk a little bit more about the costs, um, but the costs vary from 5,000 pounds to upwards of 15,000 pounds, depending on the clinic that you go to, the treatment that you're having, um, as Claire mentioned, the add-ons that you might choose or be recommended to go through. Um, so it's very personalized, but it's also a minefield to have to understand how much one round of IVF is, let alone um, how much you might have to spend overall. And that's exactly why he founded Gaia Family, was to really pinpoint and help relieve those two pain points for people going through IVF treatment. And the way that we do that is with our plans, we allow you to access IVF treatment more accessibly by only paying Gaia a premium payment to start your IVF treatment, which is around, on average, 20 to 30% of the cost of your IVF treatment at your clinic. And that means that we can pay all of your IVF costs to your clinic um, that we deem essential. And I can go into a little bit more about that in, in a later slide. So you go through your IVF treatment and you do not have to worry about a single payment. We have handled all your bills and expenses. And on top of which we cap your costs per cycle and we tell you upfront before you go through any treatment this is how much your IVF costs at your chosen clinic, including medication and including all essential treatments for you. So you're not worried about those spiraling costs that um, oftentimes patients experience. With a Gaia plan, you only pay us back once you have given birth to your child. And you do not pay us back if you do not have a child in your covered rounds. So you may be insured for three rounds, four rounds, five rounds, we can ensure you up to six rounds of IVF treatment. And if you go through your six rounds, for example, and do not have a child, you wouldn't have to pay back the cost of your IVF. That's where our insurance um, kicks in. In terms of what we cover, we cover all IVF um, treatments, including standard IVF, IVF and ICSI, sperm donor, egg donor, shared motherhood, or oftentimes reciprocal IVF. Um, what we don't cover at the moment is what Claire mentioned as HFEA add-ons, which do not have um, enough proof that they affect your chances of success. So we don't want to incentivize our Gaia members to go through all these additional treatments and procedures if it's not proven by the HFEA to necessarily help in in a, in a successful live birth. And at the moment, we do not cover surrogacy um, because we don't have enough data on surrogates. However, we do we can cover the IVF treatment itself. So please reach out to us if you are needing a surrogate. Um, we might be able to help you with the IVF treatment, just not the surrogacy costs. On top of which, being founded by a patient. Um, we really, really care about our Gaia members. So we aren't here and I can attest, um, I work with all of our Gaia members. We are not a, a company that just comes in at the point of you starting and you pay us a premium, we pay your costs and we, we never speak to you again. That is absolutely not our ethos and our mission. We support you throughout your entire journey, um, just um, as FN UK brilliantly does. We offer 12 sessions of complimentary counseling for you, which we cover. We also give you access to an independent embryologist and fertility coach. And we have our own Gaia member community groups, uh, WhatsApp groups for you to um, seek support through our other Gaia members. Um, and we're very excited about being able to offer that because 
it's something that we find our GAIA members really um, benefit from as they go through their IVF treatment. That's a little bit about us and our plans. Um, and I unfortunately don't think I left my email address, but if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to email us at hello at gaia.family. I can also chat it in the chat. Um, and also I can answer any questions about costs, but if you are interested in understanding the cost potentially at a specific clinic um, for a specific treatment, also please email us because we have done extensive research on every IVF clinic in the UK and their costs of each treatment. So we can give you that uh, cost of, of what you might be needing at your clinic because the costs I'll give you now are quite general because it really depends on where you live and of course the treatment that you're having. Um, but thank you so much and please don't hesitate to email us or ask any questions during this call. Lucy, thank you so very much. Um, if you stop sharing your slides, I'm going to come to um, the Q&A. So I had two questions in advance, which I'll take first. And then if anyone else has any questions, please pop them in the Q&A and I'll ask them on your behalf. We'll try to get through as many as we can. Um, so the first question, I think, uh, Claire's for you. So are people successful when they challenge their ICB and put in a funding request? Uh, absolutely people can be yeah um I wouldn't say it's guaranteed that you will be but I think it's always worth a try um there are we, we hear numerous stories where people have been successful so I would absolutely encourage you to try um it can be a long slog but give it a go <laughs> thank you Claire uh, the next question then um Lucy so my clinic have quoted six thousand pounds including meds how much would I pay you and do you cover meds yes that's a great question so we do cover meds we cover all meds up until 12 weeks of pregnancy um regardless of what the doctor prescribes and we also include top-ups so if your doctor suddenly says you needed more as you're going through treatment that is all covered by Gaia um and the oh in terms of how much you pay for a six thousand pound uh treatment it you'd have to come to us and you fill out your fertility questionnaire which basically allows us to calculate your premium that you'd pay per round but it on average would be around two thousand pounds for that premium payment that you'd make to Gaia um, it's yeah 20 to 30 percent of the cost of the IVF cycle and um, you can pay that in monthly installments for over five months um, and I also see another question should I answer that yeah you can well? do I'm just gonna I'll, I'll read it out just so for people for the recording are aware so Lucy please how do you pay Gaia back is it a monthly plan Yes, um, and it's a great question and something I forgot to, to explain in the presentation, but on top of being able to pay your premium in monthly installments, you also can pay us back once you have your child in monthly installments for up to eight years. And that is not something that you have to decide when you start. That's not something you have to be locked into, but when you have your child, you can either decide I'd rather pay back in one go. I'd rather pay back over X number of years. And we also do not have any early repayment fees. So if you decide to change um, as you're paying us back what you would like to pay, that's absolutely fine. Thank you. Another question has come through for you, Lucy. Does Gaia offer only funding for IVF and not IUI? Great question. Unfortunately, at the moment, we don't cover IUI treatment because we don't have enough data for that but we are working on covering IUI and egg freezing so definitely stay stay tuned for that but at the moment it's only IVF treatment. Thank you. Um, is this dependent on your credit score? Does it only go under one person's name and does that have to be the birth mother? It doesn't have to be the birth mother. What we do do is we do a credit check and affordability check to make sure that our plan is fair and affordable for our members. We don't want to in any way offer a plan that may be unfair for our members. So we do do a credit check, but only one, um, one person, if you're single, we'd run a a credit check on just you otherwise we'd run a credit check on you and a partner but only one of you needs to pass 
and it doesn't have to be the birth mother. Thank you. Um, so if somebody pays monthly from the start, but this doesn't result in a live birth, do they get the money back? So you actually don't pay monthly from the start. You only pay monthly once you have your child, which means that there is no refunds. We just say when you have your child, you pay for your IVF cycles that you've been through. If you don't have a child and you're covered rounds, you don't have to pay for your IVF. Thank you. Um, another question that's come through, is there a maximum number of time you can have treatment? So we cover IVF for up to six rounds, um, which means that you can go for six rounds. Uh, we don't go more than that because actually we just don't have enough data on it. Um, so that is our maximum number of rounds that we cover you for. Thank you. Next question then, we're a queer couple who have self-funded six rounds of IUI and one round of IVF. Our ICB offers funding after six rounds of IVF, but we don't qualify due to BMI. Do you have any resources for getting an individual funding request agreed due to BMI? So that's for you, Claire. Unfortunately, BMI restrictions aren't really to do with the IVF treatment. They are more to do with um, the risks involved in pregnancy. So the BMI restrictions are put in place more as a, a guidance for a healthy pregnancy. And I don't think you would have success in terms of an individual funding request for based on a BMI. Um, we do have a fantastic weight loss group which is specifically for people that are struggling to receive treatment due to a BMI so you may find that helpful to join and have discussions with them um, but no in terms of individual funding requests there wouldn't be I don't think much success if it was related purely to BMI. Thank you. That's um, the end of the questions that have come through so far. So I'll just give a minute or two just in case anyone else has any other questions. Oh, as I say, another one pops through. Oh, so somebody saying BMI is an archaic system based on white men. How is this what holds us back as a queer interracial couple? And I think everyone in the room would totally agree with that somebody else do we have to inform the clinic that we're going to use the Gaia insurance yeah so basically we work with partner clinics but we also do not limit our Gaia members to go to our partner clinic so if you would like to go to a clinic of your choice that's absolutely fine you can let them know and in some cases we can work with the clinic and they can send us your invoices directly Otherwise, uh, we do have members where they just forward us all the invoices and we make the payment on their behalf. So ideally, we don't want that to happen so that you just don't have to even see an invoice as you go through treatment. And we do work with that clinic to, to liaise with them. But worst case, you just forward us the invoices and we make the payment. Lovely. Thank you. Um, I think that's the last of the questions that are currently coming through. Um, so thank you everyone for attending um like i've said uh next week we have we are joined by natalie gamble so she's a leading um lawyer in all things fertility so she'll be fantastic to let us know about any legal implications with regards to creating a modern family and that's next week at the same link um at 7 p.m but for now lucy and claire thank you so very much for um sharing your expertise tonight and everyone else will see you next week. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Bye-bye.